episode three of the School Psych Finds podcast, How to Become a School Psychologist. Welcome to School Psych Finds, the podcast, a show where we'll explore various topics related to the fields of psychology, education, human development, and of course, school psychology. I'm your host, Sophia, a nationally certified school psychologist, and these are my School Psych Finds. Welcome back to the School Psych Finds podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to become a school psychologist. A lot of people might not know what a school psychologist is, so if you haven't listened to episode one, make sure you go back and do that before listening to this episode. Today, we're going to talk about what kind of training you need to become a school psychologist, how to find a good grad school program, and what some good experiences to have in order to get into those grad school programs and to be a good school psychologist. Most of the information I'll be giving you about how to become a school psychologist comes from the standards set by our national organization called NASP and that's the National Association of School Psychologists. If you haven't heard of them, make sure to check them out. I'll link their information in the show notes. They have a lot of great resources and information about school psychology and about becoming a school psychologist. And then lastly, people often ask me a lot about my journey to become a school psychologist. So while that won't be the main focus of today's episode, I will share a little bit with you about how I became a school psychologist and some of the training I have as we go through the different requirements. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a review. All right, so to become a school psychologist, you are going to have to go to grad school. However, you might not need to get a doctorate degree. Actually, the vast majority of school psychologists who work in the public school system don't have a doctorate level degree. And one of the perks of being a school psychologist is we're one of the only professionals that are allowed to have the title psychologist in our job title without holding a doctorate level degree. Now, that's not to say that many school psychologists don't also hold doctoral level degrees. It's just not required to be a school psychologist. Caveat here that there are maybe a couple states that don't allow school psychologists to use that job title unless they have a doctorate, but the vast majority of them do. So how do you become a school psychologist? The first step will be getting your bachelor's degree, and most school psychologists probably have their bachelor's degree in psychology. I went to UCLA and I got my bachelor's in psychology and that was part of my journey, but it's not a requirement. You could have a bachelor's degree in some related field, something maybe like sociology, child development, education. You would just need to make sure that you have the prerequisite courses and background knowledge, and that might usually be about statistics and psychology. But if you didn't get your bachelor's degree in psychology and you're interested in becoming a school psychologist, I recommend looking at the program that you want to go to and seeing what their prereqs are because chances are you might just be able to supplement some of those courses and still apply to that grad school program. Now, in terms of experiences to help you get into grad school and for being a good school psychologist, there's really a large variety of things you could do because as I talked about in episode one on what is a school psychologist, school psychology is a very specialized and specific field, but it's also really broad and related to a lot of other fields. And so you could do really anything that is related to psychology, education, working with families, working with children, all of those things are going to be fabulous experiences for being a school psychologist. Now, some of the common things that we hear that are good experiences for applying to a program and your work as a psychologist is being a substitute teacher, an instructional assistant, doing a lot of babysitting, working in research labs, tutoring, working with children and family in different capacities, even such as being an ABA coach or a BCBA. Your options are almost endless again, as long as it's in a related field. Now, as for myself, this definitely is by no means the only way or the recommended way. I'm just telling you what my experience was. I've worked with children my entire life. I did babysitting for probably upwards of 10 years before I became a school psychologist on a regular basis. I also worked at a children's fitness center called My Gym. If you haven't heard of that, it's non-competitive gymnastics and they have birthday parties and they do like the mommy and me classes, things like that. I also worked in a research lab with pregnant women and their newborns and infants, and I did some cognitive assessments on those infants, and then I was a labor and postpartum doula for a bit. So in a variety of different contexts, I really got to work with children throughout the span of their development. 
pregnant from day old newborns and at this point all the way through high school. So you've gotten your bachelor's degree, you've gotten your related experiences, now it's time to apply to grad school. Now, disclaimer here, your program needs to be a school psychology program. So again, as I talked about in episode one, a school psychologist is not just any type of mental health professional who works in the schools. It's a very specialized training and it's a very specific field. So you need to make sure if you want to be a school psychologist that your grad school program is training you in school psychology. So it's not just a master's in psychology or something. Now, your options for grad school, you really have two paths that you can take. You can take the specialist level degree path or the doctorate level degree path. Now, the vast majority of school psychologists have the specialist level degree, and that will take you about three years, and it's sufficient for working in the public schools. NASP approves those programs, and I'll explain what a specialist level degree is in a bit, because similar to no one knowing what a school psychologist is, Most people also don't know what a specialist level degree is and haven't heard of it. Let's quickly talk about the second path, which is the doctoral path. That will take you about five to six years, and those programs are also approved and accredited by NASP, but they are also primarily accredited by the APA, which is the American Psychological Association. Now, if you're going for the doctorate level, there are plenty of school psychologists who have a doctorate and work in the school system, but I would say the main reason for going for your doctorate, aside from further training, is to work in private practice or in other settings outside of the school system. And you don't absolutely have to have a doctorate to work in private practice. That depends on the state you're in and the training you have, but usually that's why you might go for a doctorate level degree. About 15% of school psychologists have a doctorate. Now, I highly recommend that you start your search through NASP, our National Association, and look at their approved programs. They actually have it laid out really well on their website where you can go and look by state at the approved program, so it makes it really easy for you to do. And that's going to give you the best chance of making sure that the program you're going to is going to train you in what you need to know to be a great school psychologist and in order to get a job. As I mentioned before in previous episodes, there's a huge shortage of school psychologists. In tandem with that, there is a huge shortage, I would say, of school psychology graduate programs. So going to that NAS website will help you kind of figure out what programs are available in your state. And it differs across the states really substantially. So some states like New York and California have upwards of like 30 different programs within the state. And even that actually isn't that much, but it's a lot more than other states. And now even within those 30 programs in those states, only about half of them are approved. So that's kind of a bummer because your options aren't that large. However, it makes picking a program a lot easier and NASP has done all the hard work for you in telling you which programs are approved approved in your state. Now, the sad thing is some states have very, very few programs and even fewer that are approved. There are some states that only have one approved program. And then there are some states like historically Hawaii, Alaska, and Wyoming that don't have any grad school programs for school psychology. So this is something you definitely want to make sure to research and look into and start looking at those programs in advance so you know what you're getting yourself into and what the possibilities even are. NASP also has a list of all the programs that they're aware of for school psychology. That can be helpful as well, even if they're not approved by them. They also accredit programs, but I'm not sure that that's as important as them being approved. I highly recommend, again, going to an approved program if you can. So now let's talk about what is a specialist level degree because I'll be honest, before I went into a school psychology program, I didn't even know that was a thing and I think it's confusing to people on a lot of different levels. A specialist level degree, the best way to think about it is it's a step between a master's and a doctorate level degree. That's the best way that I can explain it because a master's degree is usually about two years and about 40 grad school credits and a doctorate degree is anywhere from five to seven years and is usually about 90 credits. A specialist, which is the degree that most school psychologists have, is right in the middle. It's about three years and it's about 60 credits. You also have to complete a 1,200-hour supervised internship that is one year long and then you usually have practicum hours as part of your program, but really the most important required piece is that supervised internship. 
Now, in terms of a specialist level degree, some people get confused because there are some states and programs that offer a titled specialist degree. So for example, my degree is called an education specialist degree, and it was three years and it's considered a specialist level. However, sometimes a specialist level is also a master's in school psychology with some additional credentials. Again, it goes beyond the 40 credits of a master's up to 60, and you have that supervised internship that's a year long. So three years really to become a school psychologist post undergrad is the minimum. So now you've graduated grad school, you have your degree in school psychology, what do you need to do next? There's an exam called the Praxis that you need to pass, and the easiest way to explain this is it's a much, much, much easier version of the bar. Nowhere near close to it. Um, As long as you went to a good grad school program, you're going to be able to pass it. That's been my experience. Now, the Praxis isn't required in every single state, but I believe it's required in most, and if you're interested in becoming an NCSP, I believe it's a requirement by NASP. Then you have the option, if you went to a NASP approved program, or even if you didn't with some paperwork, of getting your NCSP, which makes you a nationally certified school psychologist, and that's what I am. It's not required to have that to practice as a school psychologist, but I would say that it's helpful. It shows that you have a certain standard of training and also that you have continued to keep up with that standard of learning and experiences even after you've become a school psychologist. The last thing you need to do is get certified or licensed licensed by your state to work in the schools as a school psychologist, and your program should know what the process is for this. And again, if they're NASP approved, they're going to make sure you have everything you need to be accredited or licensed by your state. It varies by state, and so you're going to want to look it up under the Department of Education. Just search Department of Education, whatever your state is, school psychologist, and it should explain what you need to do there. But again, your program should be able to help you with that. And then you're done with your training and you can apply for a job to be a school psychologist and know that the vast majority of school psychologists nowadays are hired within one year or less because again, there is a huge shortage of school psychologists. Now, I often get asked, is it hard to get into a grad school program for school psychology? I would say it's probably not as hard as you might imagine because, again, for the hundredth time, there are shortages of school psychologists, so there's probably not a huge wave of people applying to the program. That being said, it's probably going to depend on your state and the amount of programs that your state has because I would say typically if you don't get into one or program, you'll get into another. But if your state only has one program, then that might be a little trickier. On my Instagram and TikTok, I have a ton of different videos on interviews tips and grad school advice. So if you're interested in that, I recommend you check that out. So just to quickly summarize the process again, to become a school psychologist, you need at minimum a specialist level degree. You're going to want to get your bachelor's degree in psychology or a related field. Then you're going to want to get some related experiences. Then you apply for that specialist level degree, which is three years with an internship or doctorate if you want that, which could take up to six years. You're going to pass the Praxis exam, and then you're going to get certified and licensed in your state, and then you have become a school psychologist. I hope this episode helped you to understand a little bit more about the training required to become a school psychologist. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. I absolutely love hearing from all of you, and I look forward to talking to you again soon on our next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the School Psych Finds podcast. Join our community by subscribing and following me on my other channels, which can be found in the show notes. Lastly, if you enjoyed the podcast, it makes a huge difference if you leave a quick review. I'll see you all soon for our next School Psych Finds.